Hey guys, welcome to part 10 of this video series on style in comic book coloring. I'm just showing the, the blue brushes here, just me showing the tools I'm going to use. Super basic. We just have some round building paint brushes of various hardness and then a couple stippling brushes. That's it. We, I had mentioned in the past videos that we were going to try photorealistic, but it turns out that when you paint something photorealistic with line art, it looks terrible. It's really, really, really bad looking. And I did a couple passes at his face, and as you can see, his face is not photorealistic at all. But it has a certain amount of texture and realism that isn't in any of the other work. And the textures, if, if you watch the last video on using photographic textures, those aren't real at all. You don't get a realistic effect, you just get an effect. And they're much faster. And that's the thing. You can you could speed out a few neat looking effects if they if you use them sparingly. And I didn't. And that was on that was the video with Magic, uh, the the female character who kind of looks like a Final Fantasy character. I painted her half cloud, half lightning. And you can look on the channel and see that video. Um, so we're painting Loki here, and I'm trying to toe the line between entering the uncanny valley. And where things look real enough to be real, but not real enough to be real. And then they just end up being artificial. And then we have the, it's compounded by the fact that you have, we have line art. Now I'm coloring the line art in places, but really, if you wanted to do something photorealistic, you should just paint it, right? Use the line art as a guide and paint over top of it. But then I would be doing like a whole digital painting tutorial, and I don't want to do that. So, and also this is a comic book thing, and I'm a line art guy at heart, if that makes any sense. Like, I like line art, and I like, I like coloring inside the lines. I like the digital paint, but the, I tend to like uh, comics that are line art based. So, I use a couple different rendering techniques for the gold, and I'm mushing them around and creating those warps and colors with some, some smudges and some blends. Here's the, uh, the fingertip blend which is a default Manga Studio brush, and you could just use a really small smudge tool in, in Photoshop. And then I'm going to add in some texture, and I'm trying to get... I, I really couldn't find a, a middle ground where anything worked, and so instead I just gave up and started making everything look sort of real, but not really real. And my my goal was to just show some techniques. Like, I render the gold here one way, and then... The horns, the horns, I was actually pretty happy with the way I rendered it like you would render chrome. And I have these swirls, and I didn't use a filter. I used a blender to to pull the texture or pull the different colors around. And just, just like any basic digital painting, and in a lot of ways, even cell shading or even the most rudimentary coloring styles, I'm just putting in some value, picking some colors I like. Gold tends to, to go somewhere from red-orange to to yellow um you'll where the video stops there was some flatting not only were there some flatting errors but there are some some of the if you're going to use this file and the links are below to color along and do your own exercise like this where you you know we're trying to create as many as many styles as possible uh the file has a lot of flatting errors and some of the eyes and teeth are all the same color, and I didn't realize that. I just assumed that they were the same, so I didn't zoom out. And because of that, I have to go click through the color layer and, and find where they, they were doubled up and delete them. So you'll see some small hiccups. That's another, and some of that takes like five, ten minutes to figure out because there's so many. We're, we have a lot of layers at this point, and I didn't want you to have to suffer through that. So the video's running at about four or five times speed. I'm also leaving the video at a couple places to look at some reference of Loki to see how he's drawn in the comic books because I'm not the biggest Thor fan in the world. And so I don't I don't have a as you know when you do Spider Man, you don't have to you don't have to think you have to go look at what Spider Man looks like. He's in your brain I mean if you're a comic book person, if you grew up on comics typically. But or the Hulk or something, you know. But but Loki, I had to go look and see what you know. What does he really look like? 
So to make this a commit, if we were going to do photorealistic, we'd have to color all that. We had to get all this line art out of here. And I didn't want this to take four hours, to be honest. It's another thing about the more, you know, the higher the level of detail goes, the more time typically, right? So as you can see, I'm very dark and very saturated here. I'm just putting that in little spots. The brush is the brush isn't putting it down quite that dark because there's it's it's got it's probably set to about 50% opacity. So just little edges where they overlap are going all the way the full way. Now I'm looking for a texture that I can put in there before I blend it. I don't know if I'm going to narrate this whole video or if I'm going to stop at a certain point. I each section was done with the idea that it's a different material. The cape I did is a very sheer, like silken material. And I don't think I'd ever made anything look silk before. So that was fun. Uh, the, the fur. You'll see me mess around with these photographic textures that I was using for reference. I didn't actually use them. And at, at about three quarters of the way through the video, maybe a little bit more, you're going to see a big jump where I had I had come I had gone to sleep last night and then when I came back and started working on it I forgot to hit record again. So you'll see the the I you the lines go from uncolored in the in the fur to colored and it makes a big difference. And he still has a little at the end of this video he's still not completely done. But the plan is is that in the like the last two videos, 19 and 20, once all the characters are basically done, we're going to do finishing adjustment layers and especially with this this painting stuff where you have a lot of value everywhere it's it's very hard to correct value it's very easy to correct color so we'll go over things like gradient maps and adjustment layers color balance I mean s curves and and things like that you can you can kind of you can you can bring your your make your darks darker and your lights lighter that sort of thing you can you can adjust the relationship but if you don't have texture in there you there's no magic button for texture and texture invariance is where quote unquote it gets real and I didn't do a very good job planning this image out i was just sort of like oh let's do this oh let's do this let's render gold like this and because of that loki as a finished piece is hot garbage but it was interesting to create out to see what elements of quote unquote realness and i would say on a scale of like one being a flat color and 10 being real we're at like a three or a four whereas most comics are at a, at a one or a two you know cell shading is a one super rendered uh, digital painting is a three and then this when you're adding a, a a a relatively small amount of texture so just on the hard light sides i'm coloring the line art and because it's super thick black lines and because i'm using a hold over the top and a paintbrush you get these hard divisions where the black pixels are underneath which for a painted look is super gross now there's a lot of things you can do to get around that but i didn't want to i didn't want to do anything destructive to the image like i could just go right on top of the line art and you can only really do that the hold like this only works because the line art is monochrome there are no gray pixels so it's quote unquote print ready but if you have gray pixels and you have line art that's set to multiply on top of it there are there are other steps you need actually i should make a whole video on that on how to do color holds there's a cup I, I looked up a couple at a certain point i think i was having trouble with multiplied inks and there's really there's no good video on youtube if you take a look how i work i tend to work in stages i see things as like levels like all right we're at we're at level level two and then I take it and I blend it down a little bit. Then I go to level three and then I, I just kind of work like that. I don't give his flesh here any texture at all. I don't think maybe just a little bit. Because I thought it would have looked, I mean, everything I did look weird, to be honest. 
I'm not sure what I learned doing this, other than I learned a lot about fur and coloring fur line art. The finished product I'm I'm kind of happy with. I don't think it looks completely convincing, but it's kind of cool looking. And we'll when we get there. And I use so for the fur. I'm not really doing this uh, the skin much different than the Hulk, other than I add some reflections from the gold and I don't know. I don't. I just didn't want it to look super quote unquote real. Plus, we had just done all that texture work, the really gross texture work with Magic in the previous video. So when we get to the fur, I'm using, you know, same thing. I just block in some shadows to start. And then I use a hairbrush with some various, some various colors of orange and of yellow to, to create the highlights and the texture. And just, it's really just a three, it's a hairbrush with three strands that is pressure sensitive and it was just a downloaded brush and a, it's not how I get I, I would normally have just done it with a round brush a round brush and the eraser and and sketched it in but I thought let's try try and use a hairbrush I the it was the first time I'd used this hairbrush I, I used it on magic's hair to create this really gross effect and when I was looking at it it was like it looks more like fur than like hair and so it it did a, a fairly convincing job once I colored the line art. Here I'm smudging in some reflections that would be coming off of his arm, and then I'm gonna I'll take a dark texture and go over those so they kind of blend in a little bit more. Notice that the more comic booky it feels, and you start creating these big highlights, it. You don't have the need to color that line art. The blacks make more sense. But the more real you get, that black just, oh, it stands out. It's really, I think the the, mo the biggest offending part is the side of his face there, where his little mask thing is underneath his helmet. Like that, <laughs> if we could, we could paint all of him completely photorealistic, right? And then if we just left that one piece in, it just looks so flat and so gnarly that, it, it, it that that piece in it in itself completely ruins the image only because it's being colored like this like there's nothing wrong i mean the the original pencils are perfect they're j scott campbell the guy's you know is one of the greatest that there is so it's not disrespect to him this is but this is a good lesson in this this artwork right or this coloring completely does not serve this line art not at all so I guess that I guess we did learn something. So I've made three copies of this fur texture, and then I'm going to clip it down to each part. And then I warp it into place. And I thought, hey, I could probably just paint over this and use this little. I also turned him grayscale. Uh, not monochrome, but grayscale. I'm going to try and get the little hairs here moving the same direction as the inks. And I do that for all three pieces. And I thought that these would be a decent guide. I could just knock down the opacity and then dust it in. And that's not what ended up happening. I didn't use them at all. Right there, I was like, I could work with this, but it ended up just desaturating the image in a kind of a strange way. So I just put down a base tone, kind of middle saturated orange, and then I'm going to darken it up, and now I'm putting in shadows. The shadows of the fur, not I mean, the light's going to hit where it hits on the top, so you don't really have to be concerned with underneath. It's just where you want your dark spots. And those little dashes I put on the side there, I just unlocked the way, unlocked the transparent pixels, and was just flixing, fixing, flixing. I was flixing. Flixing the flats. Say that five times fast. I was fixing the flats. Here's a hairbrush. These are not ones that I made. 
nor have I modified them in any way. And I kind of just work up. I go from, I go back to the bass tone and go into the shadow, and then bring it up a little bit, bring it up a little bit, desaturate as I come up, and then try and brush in some highlights. So it doesn't look good with that, with all that black through there. And here's, I don't think those are the highlights. Maybe those are. No, I think I go a little bit lighter. Maybe. Who knows? So I was getting frustrated with the way that it looked because I didn't want to have to go and color the line art. Because at this point, if this is sped up five times, I'm at like 75 minutes, which is a long time. And then not to mention, I'd already, I'd done probably three or four versions of his face before I found one that was like, oh, okay. Like this doesn't look real, but it looks, but it's, a, but it's semi-acceptable. And at least you guys could see a little bit of what I consider to be semi-real skin. There's plenty of digital painting tutorials on painting real skin, but we're concerning ourselves with line art and comic books and not classic digital painting techniques. So to make this sheer, what I did was I, I took the inverse color. Like if it was a highlight, I took the, I took the base tone. If it was a shadow, I took the base tone. I took like a color halfway between wherever it was and in terms of value. And then I got a really noisy, even spray paint and just sprayed it over. I have a couple, I, I've used a couple different textures and a couple, and with a couple different saturation levels and just created. And then another thing with creating this sheer texture is that you want smooth, even blends. So you want nice, smooth gradients. You can see I'm just kind of yanking that down and that's just a blur. I'm just pulling those pixels with a blur and it creates a bit of a gradient. And it kind of looks like a fold. Just kind of. And you want those little dark spots in the, in the middle of the folds. And they don't have to fall on the lines. Like this would, this is a really, this is one of the easier things to paint, like kind of a folded piece like this without any line art at all. But when you add those extra folds in the middle, it just gives it, it's like a little bit more material there, it puffs up a little bit and I don't really have any rhyme or reason to what I'm doing at this point. Now here's where I'm adding the, the sort of sheer and sheen all over the place. I could have taken that a lot further. You could make it really look like a piece of silk in the light, but I just wanted a, a subtle effect. I'm going to add more to the cape. I don't know if I do it on the video or not. So here's where it jumped. I had already done a bit of his gum and a little bit on his teeth. Remember how big this image is? We're not trying to paint photorealistic eyes. I want to give his eyes a bit more texture and depth. And the eye, the eye is a sphere. And oftentimes in comic books and in cartoons, the eye is not treated as a sphere. It's treated as a flat surface. So just giving it a little gradient on either side uh, and respecting that the way that light works off of a sphere and not even in a in a big or significant way just you know tiny gradients tiny little things to make you think that it's that it's in three dimensions can make it look good and as you can see zoomed in close on the face like i this his skin is right, there are pieces that are a little bit a little bit skin like but then imagine what that would look like really blended down and really textured like real skin next to that line art I mean, it doesn't look good either way, if I'm being perfectly honest, but it was, it's a, I mean, it's a learning experience. That's, that's all this thing is. I'm learning as, as much as anyone who's watching these videos. 
by doing this, by painting characters that aren't my characters that In, in ways that I never would have, in ways that are completely non-traditional or nonsensical. Like, look at Black Widow. I just smeared a bunch of ink in there to make her look like someone else's inks and attacked her with texture brushes, and it is what it is. It's, it's certainly, it's a specific style. There are comics that are that style. I'm reading uh, Son of the Devil, which is very cinematic, I will say. and it kind of it has that you know that very messy inked style here i'm looking for a little bit more texture to bring into the cape and then the shadows are kind of the wrong colors I give a little bounce light from that fur and add some brown just taking taking it a little bit further You can see where the line art is colored now on the fur. And that was the only, if I had to pick one part of the piece that I didn't hate, it was probably the fur. But this was a very strange, and I guess some of those swirls, even though gold doesn't necessarily do that, that's more of a chrome thing in the helmet. But the next time I render chrome, I'm, I'm going to do what I did there instead of using, sometimes I use the chrome filter in Photoshop, but running out of time. See you for part 11. Take care, guys.